Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, June 25th. It took me a moment. Thursday, June 25th. And I would like to continue sharing some thoughts with our graduates. And today I would like to talk about one thing only. And the word is choices. Because making the right choices is so incredibly crucial. And making those choices at this particular time in history has never been more fraught with uh, consequences, good and bad. So very important to make choices that enhance our lives. Some might say, well, always make the right choice. Um, Sometimes choices are not always right or wrong. Sometimes we make choices in life which seek a road or a path for us that we know may not be the best one, but it's the one that will work in this circumstance. And sometimes those are the most difficult ones. They're neither necessarily right or wrong, but it reflects the circumstances, the situation of the moment. And those are the ones which often grow us the most. They grow us the most. Um, There are uh, lots of choices with obviously good consequences. Uh, As you um, are uh, grow in life, um, don't smoke, right? Don't, Don't take up smoking or vaping because the choice is that you're putting a toxin in your body and you don't need to do that. And the consequences will be that if you do that rather heavily down the road, you will face um, significant health risks, right? So that's, that's really an easy one. But then there are those choices which have consequences in a whole variety of different ways. Uh, we make uh, choices about Um, where we might go to school, what college we're going to choose. Um, Maybe we can't afford a college that's a private school we got into because of the stress that it would place on mom and dad and on the ability to go there. So it may have been our first choice and the one we really, really wanted to go to, but instead we will go someplace else that we've been accepted that may not offer everything that the top tier school offered, but it offers enough. But it will mean that you may have to work through college in perhaps a different way than you thought. You may have to work harder. You may find that you have to academically diversify yourself in a way that you might not have to have done if you had that other choice to go through. You may go there and decide in one or two years that that second choice was not the best one, and now there is something else you need to do. We choose careers, and sometimes a career opportunity comes along that is not exactly what we want to do, but the pay is really good. The benefits are spectacular, and we know that in a few years we can move to another level with that experience behind us and seek what we really want. But for the present, we will take the opportunity that presents itself. So there are a couple of choices there that are not exactly what we might want, but they're the right choice in that moment of time. And as I said before, those are the ones that help us to grow most of all. The obvious choices for the right thing, well, they're they're good, but very often they're... um, They're the easy choices. But the ones that really define us are the ones that challenge us the most. They're the ones that we take on and realize that this is going to change me, maybe in ways that I didn't expect, but this is what I need to do. This is where I need to go. This is who I want to become. You know, I talked the other day about adolescence and teenage years and all of that <clears throat> and then you become a grown-up but even becoming a grown-up someone in their 20s there's a opportunity in a moment 
for a lot of growth. I see this in, in what I do in that most of the weddings that I officiate at, most of those folks are between 28 and 32 years old. I can't even remember the last time that I officiated at a wedding where the couple was 18, 19, and 20. And yet, 30, 40, 50 years ago, that was the norm. People today want to make sure that their choice of career, where they want to live, the house they want to have, there are so many other aspects of growing up in that period of time that they want to have in place before they commit to a wedding, to marriage. They want all that to be chosen and fleshed out and put into place. So the notion of choices and the consequences of those choices affect every single aspect of who we are and, and how, we, how we grow and, and, and where we go. Educationally, today, choices people make are changing the world. Significant numbers of folks in medical school and in um, law school are now female. And you can see this in, in our society. Uh, and that's a significant change. We as a society have opted to give women significantly more choices on a path to a career. And that's also something that's only happened in the last 20 or 30 years. And there are still pathways that are not so easy for the females among us, for women among us. Still a great many things have to be worked out. But this is um, an enormous change in our society. Glass ceilings still exist. Uh, for women in any number of job opportunities and for a great many other people as well, minorities that we have to work our way through. But again, choices are so important. So to you graduates who I spoke to yesterday, try to think very clearly about where you want to go and, and what you want to do and to crystallize in some fashion a path forward and to know that if you're struggling, so are a great many others. And that's part of the process. But struggle affirmatively, not negatively. Don't, don't struggle in the sense that, well, I can't do this and I can't go there and I want this and I can't have that. Struggle in the affirmative of what you know you can do, of what you know you can accomplish, of, of how much you know you can change the world and life around you. Struggle affirmatively and not negatively because that just leads to bitterness and angry anger at the world. It, the whole attitude, it's I'm not where I need to be and it's someone else's fault and, and I'm unhappy and all the, and it's just so common to hear that today. Don't be part of that. Don't be part of that. Be part of a pathway in life that helps you to grow and change and become truly the person that you and God and your parents know you can be. Take care and God bless. The gospel today comes from Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons in your name? Did we not do mighty deeds in your name? Then I will declare that to them solemnly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like the wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine, but does not act on them, will be like the fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes.
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And <clears throat> I always liked this gospel. Many years ago, I was looking for um, a country house when I was in my late 20s, um, something inexpensive that I could have, a place to go to. And I remember the day I was shown several houses. And I remember one of the houses, this was up in New York State, and one of the houses we went into was a beautiful old farmhouse, a lot of stonework. And I went in the basement and the foundation was rock. And I could see daylight coming through all the rocks. And I looked at the real estate lady, she was very nice, and I said, I don't think so. And she said, but it has everything you want. Lots of property and pasture and everything else. And I said, yes, and it has something I don't want. A foundation that looks like Swiss cheese. I don't want to spend my life patching holes. And I always think about that moment. I eventually did get a house that had a solid foundation. But I always think about that when I listen to this gospel because Jesus is saying something to them that they all understood, that we understand. If you're going to build a house, make sure the foundation is in good shape. Put all the necessary materials and labor and resources into it because it's going to hold up the house. And our faith life is the same way. Every day we need to put into our life of faith and our relationship with God all the things that strengthen that relationship. It is absolutely critical. And that means, as I said yesterday, be people of love, be people of patience, be people of, of faith and hope and charity. That's the mortar. Like you mix up the mortar and you stick it in between all the rocks to make the foundation strong or the block. You know, that, that's the mortar that we have to constantly be in. And as you've seen older homes, the mortar starts to crumble and fall out after time. And you have to have your fireplace repointed or you have to have the brick, you know, regrouted. And, and our lives are just like that. That's why we can't say, well, I was baptized. You know, I went to Mass once two years ago. Um, it's not enough. We have to constantly, <coughs> excuse me, be repointing our house of faith. Constantly filling in the cracks, the places where it's falling apart. We have to be always doing that because it's important. If we want that, that edifice of faith and love to survive. Two people in a marriage know exactly what I'm talking about. You have to work at a marriage. You have to put in place all the things that support it and sustain it. And the same is true of you and I. We have to do that to that life of faith, to pray and to reflect and to be part of a parish community are just a few of the ways that our house of faith stays strong and is built on rock. There's so much sadness and pain and, and anger in the world because people made the wrong choices. The mortar fell out, the rocks fell down, life fell apart, look where I am now, and it's somebody else's fault and I don't like God because God did this to me. You don't know how many times I've heard that. Who wants to hear that? That's not true. You did it to yourself. Let us not put ourselves in mortal peril. We wouldn't do that. We hopefully listen to the doctor, but let us not put ourselves in spiritual peril by making sure that the edifice of faith, which is so precious, was given to us at baptism, is kept free from the poison of sinfulness for a lifetime. Take care, my friends. See you soon. And now, my friends, as we have shared the Word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion.
Please join me in prayer, my friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the peace of Christ always be in your hearts. Now, my friends, I invite you to share a sign of peace with those you are with at the moment and share it with them throughout the day. This Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, and it is a time of great um, celebration, the birthday of our church. Thank you.